Joining me now is Andreas Lendline, and he was just awarded the MRS Communications Lecture Award. Congratulations. Thank you. And I understand it's for a topic that is very, very interesting. Um, you're actually going to be talking about uh, shape morphing materials in your talk. And you are actually basing that from the Venus flytrap that all of us know about, but may not have seen it in the way that you study it. Why the Venus flytrap? Before I answer your questions in detail. First of all, let me thank the MRS Communications Journal for selecting our publication. And it's a pleasure to be here in Hawaii and to have the first in-person meeting after so many virtual meetings in the, in the meantime. The virtual flytrap has been described by Charles Darwin already about 150 years ago. And the characteristic about this plant is this jaw-like trap, which is formed by two lobes, which are together connected to the midrib of the organ. And what is the interesting feature of that fly trap is that it snaps so quickly. It's a few tenths of a second that are needed for that process. And this mechanism is very much based on the shape of the lobes. The lobes are shell, have a shell-like shape, which is a constrained geometry. In the very beginning, the curvature is looking outwards. And then they do something that goes quickly, which is an inversion of the curvature. They snap through. And that is what makes it so fast. The challenge is to overcome the energy barrier that hinders typically this movement. And that occurs after a mechanical simulation on the inside of the lobes by small sensory hairs, a water displacement leads to a stretching on the outside of the lobes. That generates a stress energy internally. And if that overcomes the hurdle, it goes quickly. And this mechanism, which is nicely described in a review paper by Joel Pater, which we um, took as a starting point, this is what we try to mimic with our synthetic materials. You see, triggering by an external stimulus, the active mechanism, and then the snap-through mechanism. And we made use of all types of digital methods, from digital design to predictive modeling, and also the fabrication uses digital tools. Amazing how science is taking a page from nature, the amazing uh, structure of nature. Um, now, your talk is on Monday at 10.30 in Kalakaua Ballroom B. So what can you tell us about what you'll be presenting? I will address the topic of shape morphing materials from a bit wider perspective. Well, I will begin with shape memory polymers. Those are the heat shrinkable foils that we see often at the airport when some shrink wrap is burned around a suitcase. I will explain how other stimuli and heat have been applied, like light, magnetic field, or even humidity can trigger this shape memory effect. And they have application potential, especially in minimally invasive surgery, where we want to place large spacious implants through small incisions in the body, and then they unfold to the application relevant shape. Then this field moved to reversible movement, temperature controlled, and this temperature controlled movements allows to make artificial muscles, fiber muscles. And I will demonstrate an origami robotic hand that moves driven by this fibers and they are like super muscles because bending our arm means we need one muscle to bend, the other ones to stretch. Our fibers can do both in, in one piece. And then we move on to the plant inspired um, moving material and the first example will be a cactus. A cactus that can be found in the Atlantic forest in Brazil. This cactus can surge, it can migrate, it can find its way from rock to rock, to tree, from tree to tree. And this was a collaboration with two biologists, Nick Rower and Patricia Sofiati. They gave us this cactus and we analyzed it. And then by digital methods, we had different evolutionary artificial cactus, which then were able to replicate the functions, moving, for instance, changing the cross section. And finally, the highlight will be the fly trap. I will introduce a film where we implement a pyramidal structure. The pyramidal structure has different angles. Depending on the angle, it's bistable or monostable. 
bisabular means it stays up and we can switch it by pressing on it and it turns down. Monostable means we cannot keep that one shape and automatically goes back. Now what we want to achieve is that automatically we go from the first shape to the second. So we need to switch from bistable to monostable state. And that is where we use the shape memory effect for. It means by temperature increase, the angle switches a little bit, we turn from bistable to monostable and we get this snap through motion. You did mention that you have some co-authors on that paper. Why was it important to collaborate with them? That was a truly interdisciplinary project. As Johann Beckermo, who did all the work with the computational design and with the predictive modeling. So we saw in the computer, in principle, it would work. But then somebody then had to translate the, the, the results from the virtual world to the real world. And that was Yui Liu's work. She made those devices and she demonstrated that they really work. A fantastic team. Well, congratulations on the amazing work that you are already doing. What's next in this particular field? And to use such materials for challenges of our society and of our world, and we need clearly more sustainable products. And one area that I find quite interesting and rapidly developing are soft robots. And we want to make them autonomous. We want them to take up energy from the environment, the temperature changes that will cause them to move and sensorial capabilities that makes them adaptive. And they should become resilient. That means if they were damaged, they at least partially should pertain their function. And that is again what we can learn from the plants. And the next manuscript is already in the finalization stage. This time it is a collaboration with Thomas Speck. And that is another feature that is um, mimicked from plants. Wonderful. That's so interesting. Again, inspired from nature and applied in so many interesting I love that topic. aspects. I know. Wonderful. And again, shape morphing materials. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming and sharing that with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for the interest.